Global warming, we now know, is of course due primarily to the release of carbon dioxide. This global warming is associated with about every electricity production method that we know. And the question is not which one will we choose except perhaps nuclear or fusion power, but even they have certain drawbacks, as we all know. The only one that is most comparable with the environment and will not produce the global warming caused by burning fuel is the power we beam to Earth from the sun. In this slide, we graphically demonstrate that we have increased our population from a little bit around 2 billion people that we now see us having 10 billion people on planet Earth. This increase in population appears to be nearly unsustainable if we look at the availability of energy and the uh, conservation of the environment. In the next slide, we see the kind of challenge we face because now we are reaching the maximum availability of energy sources. We now expect that by the middle of the century, all of these energy resources will have been nearly exhausted and we can no longer maintain the population on planet Earth to the degree that they will demand and thus new energy sources which no longer rely on terrestrial energy sources will be required. And the best source that we have access to is solar energy. Because all of the data and uh, papers and uh, presentations that we made here in the U.S. and in various uh, international uh, congresses were of great interest to many other nations. And thus it's not surprising that the one nation which probably can use space solar power to the greatest advantage is Japan. And Japan used the kind of information that they already could get to start their own space solar power program. And this slide shows some of the early developments that they were doing in this area. The Japanese then performed probably the most single challenging experiment in this field. And that was to launch a satellite and another satellite. And one satellite would beam microwaves to the other satellite. And this slide shows the program as presented at an International Space Congress by some scientists from the Soviet Union indicating that they also are working on space solar power and that they have thought through several of the important steps that will have to be taken in order to demonstrate at various times the kind of technologies which they hope to develop. The role of the United Nations in space solar power down the road will be essential because all the nations will have to have inputs to the basic questions that they ask. Well, who controls it and who benefits from it and how can we be assured that somewhere, somebody will not interrupt the essential power supply if we rely 
on space solar power. I am certain that with the goodwill of all the nations and with the help of the United Nations staff, we can arrive at the necessary legal framework to make this work for all people on Earth for as long as the sun will shine. Here you see the distribution of the microwaves as they are received at the antenna. At the highest level, they're about a quarter of the energy of sunlight. So we are dealing with a very diffuse energy source. At the edge of the antenna, we are close to the kind of international uh, safety rules for microwave ovens. For example, each microwave oven is designed to be safe with the door closed so that you're not exposed at all to microwaves if you're at least four feet away from the oven. Similarly, this is a rule we have at this receiving antenna so that if, unless you climb over the enclosure, you will not be exposed to microwaves any place beyond the perimeter of the antenna. There was one concern we had, and that is when we beam energy back to Earth, we have to re-enter certain portions of the atmosphere. And some of these portions have an effect on the electrical properties of the high atmosphere. Now, how do we make sure that we do not interfere with these upper atmospheric, atmospheric conditions? Well, the simplest is to use an antenna, an existing antenna on Earth. And that we did in the location at Arecibo, where is a, a mile diameter an receiving antenna for various space experiments. And that way, we were able to demonstrate that the microwaves coming back to Earth will not interfere with the radio communications from other sources here on Earth because we are not heating up some of the upper atmosphere layers which are crucial for this purpose. Nothing ever built arose to touch the skies unless some man dreamed that it should, some man believed that it could, and some man willed that it must. This quote by C.F. Kettering summarizes my feelings about space solar power.